Hang on. Damn it. Welcome to John Ray's Backwoods Guns. Filming a uh, video tonight on uh, for my reloading channel. Um, reloading um, with Johnny Ray. I'm going to move it somewhere. I'm going to try to keep it on YouTube unless they throw me off. But I'm looking for another site. I'm just waiting on uh, where everyone else lands. And that's probably where I'll land where the reloading community goes. Anyway, I... Uh, Looking at all the shit I did this week, loaded about three, four thousand rounds, and somebody came in and asked uh, for some 6.5 uh, Grendel. I didn't have any, I didn't have any brass. Um, but I had some AK-47 brass. So I'm going to go into how to convert AK-47 brass, 7.62 by 39, into 6.5 Grendel. Stick around, guys, I'll show you how to do it. All right, guys, we're going to do 6.5 six, uh, six Grendel tonight. Now, be patient with me. I uh, will probably call 6.5 Grendel, 6.5 Creed a whole bunch. Uh, but you guys know I'm doing 6.5 Grendel. Um, I was looking at this old spear book. Uh, it's the volume the volume 11. It was produced in 1987. It's wore, wore the hell out. It's, uh, it's a great book, though. I've loaded a lot of ammo out of it. It's, uh, I love these old books. Anyway, let's get to the task at hand. I'm going to uh, make some 6.5 Grendel out of AK-47 brass. Um, I mean, anybody can go and order some uh, brass. I hate it. It drives me nuts, uh, especially because 9 times out of 10, I pick brass up that I need out to the range, and I just it just chaps my ass that when I have to pay for it. The problem with 6.5 Grendel is you can't ever find it in stock. You can't hardly find it and order it. But you can find, you can find AK-47, 7.62 by 39. It's a little, this is about 40 bucks for 50 of these Hornadies. Uh, the problem is um, I hate paying for it, and you got to find it. And this ain't Grendel, but I can use this to turn it into uh, Grendel. But I'm not going to. If you find Hornady brass, Hornady Winchester, you don't have to uh, uh, cut the necks down. All right, your uh, neck thickness is about eleven thousandths, twelve thousand. That's what you want. The NATO, the NATO uh, forty-seven, uh, AK forty-seven brass is uh, these AK forty-seven. I picked these brass up at the range. Found them on the ground. Problem with AK-47, 7.62 by 39, whatever you want to call it, is most of it's steel and aluminum, so you can't cut that down. You can't mess with that. You can't reload that. So if you find some brass, then we, uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, shape it, form it, cut the necks down, and turn it into 6.5 Grendel, and the fastest and easiest way to do it. So uh, let's get started. All right, I'm using 6.5 Grendel Hornady dies. So I'm going to, it says use a uh, number six shell holder. So of course I'm going to use a Hornady number, number six because I'm going to size with this. This, um, if you notice, these Hornady dies, I really like these. They've got these bleeder uh, valves in them. And when you're uh, sizing brass, I use a lot of, a little more lube than normally just because it's got to work that brass and knock that neck down. You're taking a 30 caliber neck and you're knocking it down to 6.5 neck. So it's going to squeeze it. It's going to work it hard. I've already set this up, guys. All right, now all we're going to do is take our brass. These three are Winchesters, all right, guys? I knocked the, uh, the primers out of them already. You can see it says Winchester 7.62 by 3.9. When you shape these, form these, you're not going to uh, have to turn the necks. The uh, neck thickness on these, check it for you. If you look at the neck thickness, it says 13 thousandths. Usually between 12 and 13 thousandths is good. When you get up to 14 and 15, you're not, it's going to be too thick, okay? But these, if you check this, roll it. There's 
There's 12. There's 13. 12. Just roll it and take it. See, that's 11. Just according to how hard I squeeze this. But they're all around 12. 11 and a half, 12. Um, so you're not going to have to turn these next. So you can just basically just uh, put lube on it, run it up your sizing die, take it down, twist it, run it up. There you have. It's uh, knock that neck down to 6.5. Now usually when you knock that neck down, it uh, comes out where you've got to trim it, and uh, it's going to be too long. So we'll check how long this is. My uh, uh, Grindle book, this is a horny book, case length 1520, case trim length is 1.510, 151. And that end up 1544. So we're going to have to knock um, 34 thousandths off there. Which um, we will use my Hornady uh, case trimmer to do that with my new RCBS uh, case trimming three way cutter. I'll go ahead and size these real fast. I'm going to use my RCBS three-way cutter. Of course, this is 30 cal, right? There's your cutter. Well, I took that head out right there, the 30 cal head, and I put the 6.5 uh, head in. See, they're just trimming heads. Like I said, you don't have to order this whole piece. You can just take that out. You've got an Allen head right here and an Allen head right there. That adjusts the front. That adjusts the uh, pilot coming in and out. So I dropped the 30 out, put the 6.5 in. I got three of them. I got a 22, a 6.5, and a uh, 30 cal. Uh, usually that's what I uh, have to trim, cut. Uh, that's my three most go-to chambers. Is a 22 chamber, the 6.5 chamber, and a uh, 30 cal chamber. All right, first of all, all this brass. This Winchester brass, all right? 1544. 1534. 1532. That's the three pieces of Winchester brass that I uh, ran the uh, ran it through the 65 Grindle die and I uh, reshaped the uh, mouth. And of course, it stretched it, so we got to trim it. We don't have to turn the necks, all right? So we won't uh, worry about turning the necks. We'll just uh, set this up real fast. I take one of these lock and load 65 Grindle modified cases. It's what you use with your stony point gauge if you want to find the lands and grooves of your rifle and stretch your seating depth. But I use them uh, for this too, for setting up this. Let's measure this first. That says 1514. 1514, that's good enough for me. Uh, as long as it's under the 152, it, uh, Hornady book says you don't have to trim it. Like I was saying, guys, just slide that in. Line this up first before you tighten this. Tighten this. I just take the slack out, tighten it back up. Now your uh, depth is set. That's set at one five one four, one five one three, and we were, you know, the book says one five one zero, oh, but I think that's close enough. As long as it's under one five two. So basically, just like I always, trim. Set that up. Tighten it. Take my little drill driver here. Let me move this uh, brass catch so you guys can see. Let 
this uh this this is that uh three-way cutter it chafes deburrs and trims all at the same time so it's got a good chafe deburr that's a little uh, aggressive chafe that's one five two two we need to run a little bit more i might have that uh deburr set up just a little too tight Yeah, 1.500. So I went 10 under. Shit. Well, let's check the neck thickness. Well, let's turn this neck, all right? Usually I like 11 or 12. 13 is probably going to be okay, but uh, I'm going to turn it anyway. All right, I'm going to turn that neck anyway, but let's uh, trim all three of these first. Um, this Winchester brass, a lot of times you don't have to trim the neck. You never have to trim the neck on horny brass, okay? But a lot of times you can't find horny brass. One five one six. One of these I haven't done yet. One five one six. All right, this one I haven't done. Remember, guys, lock that in first. Then tighten your, your brass up. That way that lines up perfect, okay? If you tighten it up first, it might be cockeyed, and then this won't get you won't get a good straight cut. And these three-way heads, they trim, deburr, and chafe. So it, you can tell when it's done cutting. That uh, it saves you time when you trim your brass, when you uh, prep your brass. I'm sorry. Well, this one I didn't cut it long enough. I thought it gave way. Line your head up first, then tighten it. Sometimes when I'm making a video, I kind of get in a hurry because I don't want my videos to last a damn hour. But it is what it is. 1517. That's under 1520, okay, guys? So now, like I said a minute ago, that's 12, 11, 13. Well, this is all out. 14. A lot of times this uh, Winchester brass, you don't have to turn the necks, but I'm going to turn the necks. All right. Now, we use this three-way cutter to trim, chafe, and deburr. They came out with these case neck turners. They work the same way as in um, they have the main body, and you can change these pilots. To a 22 cal, a 30 cal, a 65 cal, you know, uh, any any caliber you want. This uh, adjustment hole, it's an Allen wrench. It'll run that up and down so you can figure out how much brass you want to trim. So in this uh, adjustment hole opens up and you pull the whole pilot out 
and you can change your different calibers. The thing about this that I like better than the Hornady when you're turning necks, it's got a blade right here for the inside of your mouth and this has got a blade for the outside. So it actually trims the inside and the outside at the same time, which that will even up the th your neck thickness in your, uh, in your uh, mouth and your uh, neck right there. It'll be the same amount inside and out. It'll take the same amount out. So let's get on with it, guys. Um, let's take this three-way cutter out. Let's put this uh, in. Now, setting this up is a little, it's a little harder than what you think. You're not trying for a uh, exact case overall length, so you don't have to use a jig or anything. But what you're going to do is, uh, of course, that's, uh, that neck's nice and tight. Of course, that neck's nice and tight, and uh, it's not giving me a lot of uh, room. Um, you, wanna, you don't want that blade, your outside blade, to go uh, cut into your shoulder. So you want to set it up where it stops right where the uh, shoulder meets the neck. What I do is I try to bring the cutting blade right to the, uh, the front of the mouth and then I'll uh, drive this forward when the uh, drill driver's turning. And I go real nice and slow. Like I said, that's gonna cut the inside and the outside of this mouth, of this neck. Now I'll pull it back and I'll start all over again and I'll slowly push it towards the uh, head stamp. Now this is where if you had that Hornady uh, drill attachment you could just pull it in and out. I didn't buy one yet but what you want, you just want to run that with the drill and you just want to run it all the way down the neck, back and forth. That's what I'm going to do. I've said this a million times. I can do a hundred of these, no problem. I try to do one on the camera and it always gives me fits. You can tell it's uh, I mean, I could put a little bit of duct tape right there for now, but um, that one's done. Now I'm gonna have to loosen that up to get it out. Can you see that? That neck is turned. Neck's 11. You want to try to measure the exact same spot every time. 12. Twelve. And you want to use about the same amount of pressure. Thirteen. Twelve. Thirteen. That one side is sticking at thirteen. 12, 12, might be just me, 12, 12, 12, it's probably just me. You just play around with it. If you need to take more off, you can drive that top uh, adjustment down for that blade, but I think uh, 
I think that'll work. That's got a good chafe deburr, a good trim. That show 1515, which is under 152. So it's um, the trim length's right, the chafe, the deburr is right. Now all you're going to have to do is uh, clean those primer pockets and put a uh, primer in it, and it's ready to load. NATO brass, you have to always uh, trim, always. Winchester brass is borderline. Hornady brass, Hornady brass is perfect. Okay, guys, let's do a piece of Hornady brass. All right, here's two pieces of Hornady brass. I'll do two so you don't think I'm lucky. Size it, spin it, size it. Size it, spin it, size it. It's Hornady brass, even after you size it, it's 1516, so that's under case trim length. And the next right at 13, 13, 13, 12, 12, 11. I think it's me pushing and me moving this up and down on my uh, tongs. Sometimes these will get sprung, okay, guys? And sometimes uh, machine shop basics... Uh, when it warms up, these are going to expand, so these might give you uh, half a ten thousandths uh, off. And these will collect oil and dirt. You can take some alcohol and put it on a piece of paper and just stick it between there and pull it out, and that cleans it. Um, but 12, 11, 12. 13, 13, 12. Guys, I think, um, I don't think this horny brass needs turned. But, uh, I mean, you can turn it if you want to, if you got the turner set up. Now, the uh, NATO brass always needs turned. Always. So, uh, let me get a piece of NATO brass here. All right, if you notice here, this is a NATO head stamp. This is the, uh, I picked this up at the range, guys. Excuse it. it uh, I ain't cleaned it or anything. I just wanted to show you how I did this. But um, let's size it. This is AK-47, 7.62 by 3.9. Spin. All right. If you notice, thirteen five, thirteen five, yeah, that's way out. Fourteen, fourteen, these are all coming out 13, 5, and 14. So this NATO always needs the next to be turned. Um, lock my uh, NATO brass in there. I'm going to go up and down real slow. Probably can't hear me talking when this drill's on, but I'm going to try to go up and back real slow. That's the whole process, guys. I just go, you know, up and back on that neck. And that blade, the outside blade and the inside blade cuts it all up. I'll do, uh, you can see it's fresh. I used dirty brass today 
that way you could see where it's cutting and the old uh, old brass you can see a difference a lot of times if it's shiny you can't tell a difference um, here's a piece you can tell the dirty brass and where I've turned the neck see that's NATO that's that NATO stuff um, This is the last piece right here. I haven't turned. Let's uh, I try to lock it in. Then I try to drive that and set it right at the shoulder. And I'll lock this in. Make sure you lock that in tight. That's in tight. We're just going to drive it and cut it real slow. kind of odd don't look like it's cutting right in that one spot Looks good, guys. That looks real good. All right, let's measure this one. I cut that one. I trimmed that one all the way to nine and ten. Nine and ten. I had to adjust that, uh, cutting head that's a PPU as long as you trim that I would trim my neck wall thickness I try to keep it between 11 and 12 uh, 10 is probably a little shy I'd back that uh, cutting stone out a little bit but that's the basic process guys um, if you want to look right here I uh, sized those, trimmed those, all out of AK-47 brass. Of course, um, whenever you uh, convert brass, always get your chamber check it, checker, all right? Because this used to be uh, AK-47762 by 39, and now you turn it into uh, 65 Grendel. So make sure it's nice flush. That way it'll chamber. That Hornady. So far, the Hornady works the best. Winchester is the second best to it, but the Hornady works the best. So if you find some Hornady AK-47 brass at the range, it's great to convert. Three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, 6.5 Grendel, 6.5 Creed uh, was just impossible to find, and everybody was converting brass. I, I hate buying brass, okay, guys? I hate it. I can't stand it. All right, but I, the second most thing I hate is turning necks. I hate turning necks. I hate turning these damn necks. I usually only turn necks on brass that I converted into something from something else. Hence, convert. Hold the help. I'm getting smart now. Anyway, um, I hate, I just think it takes too long. Uh, in a perfect world, just go buy some brand new 6.5 Grendel, buy some brand new 6.5 Creed, and use that. 
if you don't have the money or you can't find it and you've got 243s for Creed and you've got AK-47s for Grendels, just uh, convert it. This is how I convert mine. I would stick with the Hornady or Winchester and I'd convert it and I wouldn't turn next. But a lot of times you can't find that at the range. So if you find the NATOs, um, then I'd uh, turn to next. And then you've got some uh, Grendel. Um, this stuff, it, it's amazing that you can shoot, shoot a 6.5, 1,000 yards out of a 6.5 Grendel. I know people that do it. It probably, uh, the average guy, good shooter, he could probably stretch it to seven, 800. Um, same way that, you know, your AR-15 shooting your two, two, three, five, five, six. Average guy, four to 500, good group, past that. Unless he's got incredible skills, um, can read the wind, then uh, real well, got a great scope. He's not going to stretch that farther than six. These, average guy, six, seven, eight, you can stretch it to, to a thousand if you're good. Now, if you want to take your AR 15 platform out to 12, 1300, you have to step up to your 224 Valkyrie. But I'm not getting into that yet. Um, I'm going to wait and see, uh, you know. Uh, it's still being in the test phase to me. I don't usually jump on these bandwagons till uh, two, three years after something comes out and I can uh, see how it's uh, playing out before I invest in a barrel and, and uh, an upper and whatnot. So anyway, I'll just quit rumbling, rambling and um, that's how I turn my, uh, convert my AKs into Grendels. Well, guys, we might as well end this video here. Um, I still haven't found a uh, suitable format for my uh, videos yet. I'm thinking um, I'll just, uh, I'm going to follow everybody from the reloading community. I'm sure everyone will land somewhere that will support your iPhone, will support your uh, Galaxy, will support your TV, sports your computer, uh, because a lot of people watch these videos from different formats, from different uh, devices. And a lot of your um, other devices right now don't work with everything. A lot of your other apps don't work with all your devices. But uh, I think Full 30 is looking real good. Um, still, like I said, it's still out. We still got two weeks, three weeks, two and a half weeks before we have to uh, delete these videos or before YouTube deletes us. You know, I, I really, I question uh, YouTube deleting us. They say they are, they say they will. I don't know if they consider reloading hunting ammo, manufacturing ammo. It sounds like manufacturing ammunition is what we do, but uh, maybe they, uh, maybe, maybe we're all uh, misunderstanding what they mean. So we'll just have to wait and see. But until then, guys, click the like button if you like this. Subscribe. Send me a comment. Um, I'll tie. Um, I loaded the other day with one of my veteran friends. He's 80 years old. Made about a minute video, minute and a half video. I'll tie this on the end of it. You guys, uh, you'll get a kick out of it. Watch it. Anyway, guys, have a great week. Uh, I'll see you all next video. About the hog 4350. Yeah, I, told you, 4350. I said it's a different power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just got a number. That's it. That's so people will think. Uh, and there's probably there's a big difference in the performance, especially if it's cold. I'd say that it will uh, perform uh, almost as good with hot, but cold, it won't do it. It's regular 4350 if it's not temperature controlled. And that's not my version of it. I mean, all these these books has got all this wrote down. See, what makes uh, what what power to use that will make you get your best performance? In, those, in, in my old book, our new book called Heavy. Well, you know that uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, we didn't have all these bullets. No. That's why they only listen by the grain. Yeah. And they, they'd say lead or copper plated yeah. uh, or full motor jackets. But now they got so many different bullets with so many different materials. That's why I kind of like using 
you know, because uh, they do all these lab tests on them and uh, range tests. Well, hell, we ain't got million dollar worth of equipment to no. to check all this out. No, we have to go more to look at the yeah. check out the go go, and then you uh, you pick up little things you go along. Like I have all these years, I've been loading things. Meters easy. These some bitches clean so I can see something. You got brass in all of them. Yeah, you are. 